Learning Center. It's so good to see everybody in the sanctuary this morning, and we have a beautiful day ahead. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice in it. So let's just welcome in the Holy Spirit, if you would, join us in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much that we have a church to come to on Sunday, that we have the freedom to worship you, Father God, and gather together. Father, we ask now that you just steal our minds, that you just steal our just our hearts and things that have happened this week, good or bad, and just, Holy Spirit, help us to be focused on the Father so that we can receive the good word that he has for us today. And Father God, we just thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that does reveal to us, reveal to us the good things, the things that teach us and lead us. And we welcome you, Holy Spirit, to this service. We bind every hindrance, whether it be video, audio, or any other hindrance that tries to come and steal this word this day. And Father, we thank you for the angels that guard over this service. We thank you for protecting the people that are on the way. And Father God, we just give you all the glory, for this is the day that you have made, and we rejoice and praise you in it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, this morning I had a, a little devotion come across from Joyce Meyer. And, um, you know, lately I have not been feeling like I'm so perfect. You know, I, just, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but things have just been out of sort. You know, I said a couple of weeks ago, I feel like I'm a porcupine in a balloon factory. And I do. I feel like i got a little tent everywhere I go. I feel like I'm irritating something or somebody or just irritating myself. And um, so, you know, I've been seeking God about this. I said, you know, God, what is going on with me? I'm striving. I'm praying. You know, I'm reading the Word. I, I, I think I'm doing what's right. And then this morning, I got an answer. And guess what it was? Nobody's perfect. <laughs> wow. So that kind of gave me freedom. I said, well... He, the sun set, he who the sun sets free is free indeed, yes. But it came from Philippians 3 and 12. And I'm going to read, um, I think it's the New Living Translation. And it says, not that I have attained or that I have been made perfect, but that I press on to lay hold, to make it my own, what Christ has laid hold for me, making me his own. And then I really like the message. The message says, I'm not saying I have this all together. Well, that's kind of how I talk to God. God is saying, I'm just not together. And it says, or that I have made it, but that I will press on, reaching out for Christ who has been wondrously reaching out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself as have made it, but I've got my eyes open to the goal that God has set before me, and that I'm pressing onward to Jesus as God beckoning, beckons me to him. Isn't that awesome? God is calling us to him. He's calling us to be in the image of Christ, but he knows that we're not perfect. And so this is Joyce Meyer's reflection. One of the things that causes problems in relationships is unrealistic expectations, a perfection that we think others are supposed to have. In dealing with people, you must remember that it is impossible for them to behave perfectly. It is impossible for people, no matter how wonderful they are, to never make mistakes or say the wrong things at the wrong time. And isn't that true? We are all imperfect, made perfect through the power of Christ Jesus. So let's give him honor. Going to turn it over to the praise and worship team. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's just give him some praise this morning. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what we're created to do, to praise and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. He enjoys our fellowship. Amen. Amen.
but it happens. I don't say every time, but it does happen. It turns bones into armies. You know, uh, one of the prophets spoke to the bones, and they came together, and then flesh formed on, and they were a great army. And that's what God is looking at us to be, his army. And we've already got our bones, we've already got our flesh, <laughs> and we just need to be the army of the Lord. Hallelujah. If you believe that that's the case, I want you to give the Lord a shout.
living, you still get the glass in one way or another, even when you don't recognize it. So, Lord, open my eyes to see the goodness that you have poured, literally poured on us, because it is so according to your word, and you're not a man that you should lie. So there's many things that we don't see. Do you agree with that, people? Amen. People of the Lord, give him a shout. Hallelujah. You might be seated. Praise God for another wonderful praise and worship. Amen. We never know what our praise leader is going to be led by the Spirit to bring for us on Sunday morning to sing, but it's always right in line with the Spirit. And isn't it a beautiful Spirit in the sanctuary this morning? We thank you for all those that have been coming in and joining us, and we thank you as well, Facebook. Well, we've come to that time where we give back to the Lord what he has so graciously given to us. And you know, it was the Lord who gave first, and he gave us his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and made a way for us to have eternal life and to be eternally bonded with the Father. But Father also gave us some guidelines. He gave us some commandments, and he gave us some promises. And with those promises, as we follow the commandments, and we follow what the Father has set forth for us, we have provision, and we have protection, and we have healing, and we have all of the promises that come to God that are connected to the tithe. We're out. We're out. Okay. That is connected. The devil is a liar. <laughs> Thank you. But it's connected to the tithe. And you know, the tithe is 10%. And we can tithe a lot of things. We can tithe our time. We can tithe our food. We can tithe our clothing. We can tithe different things. But those are more of what we call offerings. Now the tithe is 10% of that income, of that what we get, our goods, the sale of our goods, that thing, the work of our hands. That is where the tithe comes in. And Father tells us to give us 10%. That's only 10 cent on one dollar. And he makes a promise with that from Malachi 3 and 10. And he says that if you will give to me and test me, because see, this is the only time God says to test him. And the reason he wants you to test him is because you know what? When you take a test, you study about it, don't you? And God wants us to study on these things so that we can have wisdom in our finances. So that we don't overspend, underspend, so we know when to give, not to give, you know, and how to spend our to, to spend our money. But the Lord is good because he says, I need you to take that first 10% off the top and not even think about it. Because let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up the windows of heaven, the floodgates of heaven, and I'm going to pour you out a blessing so much you can't contain it. That's a lot more return than what a bank would give you. That's a lot more return than even us with wisdom can work it out on paper. Because how many times did you go to the store and something was buy one, get one free? How many times did you look at your electric bill and think it was going to be more and it was less? How many times has a friend invited you over for dinner and that saved you that food bill? God is good and he's in everything and everywhere we are. But we have to put our trust in him. And like I said, money rules the world. You know, this is the, the paper money, how rich you are. You know, that gives you your clout. Well, with God, you already have clout. You are his favor. You are the apple of his eye. He's not asking you to give him money so he can get rich. He owns everything already. He's asking you to do that. He's commanding you to do that. Because that seals the relationship between you and him. Because if you're over here holding back, then God can't get it to you. Not going to mean that you're not under grace and mercy. I'm not here to condemn you. Okay, that's not, if you're not tithing, I just pray that the Lord will, you know, as you work out your relationship with the Lord, 
that you will come into the knowledge of this because there are promises attached, because there are good things attached, and because literally where you put your money, your heart usually follows. And God wants us to be cheerful givers. And that's why he asked us to take a look at what we have and be grateful for it. And then as the money comes in, set aside the 10% for him. And when we do that, it just shows our trust and our honor to him. And he opens up the windows of heaven, pours out a blessing so much you can't contain it. So let's claim our promises this morning. This is not a roll of the dice or roulette wheel. We're not holding a rabbit's foot. But we are going to hold our tithes and offerings in our right hand because we're going to do what's right before God. All right. As I tithe and give offerings, I believe and I receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills decreased, bills paid off, blessings and increase. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs. That I may now have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we have some ways that you can give into this good ministry, and they are paypal.me forward slash Oasis Family Church. We do have text to give at 334-274-7885. You can go to oasisfamilychurch.net. There is a donate button on the page. You can hit that. It will give you all the ways to give. You can use the cash app. That is the dollar sign, Oasis Family Church, no spaces. Or you can mail in your donations to Post Office Box 246, Smith Station, Alabama, 36877. Or you can join us in the sanctuary, and we have postage paid envelopes here. All right, well, we have a good word pastors are going to bring today. Lean on me. So let's welcome our pastors. Praise God. So good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. It was awesome. I'm telling you what, they're getting better and better. Amen. 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 Better. Or gooder and gooder. Uh, I don't get my mic on. Okay. Y'all excuse us. It's it's haunted. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> is it all now? Testing one, two. Okay. All right. Thank you. It's just now trained me. Yes. <laughs> you had to show me a lot of times, though. <laughs> Praise God for his goodness and his sense of humor. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. So I'm just so thankful to see all of you here today, amen, in the house of the Lord, worshiping our Savior, amen, and all of you that are joining by Facebook or whatever form of media you're watching us by, we just welcome you, and we're honored and thankful to have you watching us today, and as always, we would like to ask you, if you will, to share this service on your Facebook page, amen, because, you know, we want to get the gospel out, don't we? We don't have much longer on this earth. I believe that right. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. So we want to get the word of God out. Amen. Amen. And you know, this is a world that needs a Savior. Amen. More than ever. Amen. It needs a Savior. Amen. So I want to speak a word of confession over you today before I turn it over to Pastor. So as always, just be ready to receive. Amen. Amen. Ready to receive what God has for us. And it all comes from his word. So it is the truth of God. Amen. So I declare over you today that God is working all things together for your good. He has a master plan for your life. You will see God's amazing plan taking place. I declare God is going before you making the crooked places straight. He has already lined up the right people. 
the right opportunities and the right solutions to every problem. No person, no sickness, no disappointment can stop God's plan for your life. What he has promised will come to pass. I declare there is an anointing of ease on your life. His yoke is easy and his burden light. What used to be difficult will be difficult no longer. God's favor and blessings on your life is lightening the load and taking the, the stress off of your life. You have the grace of God that you need for each day. You are full of strength, power, energy. You overcome every obstacle and every challenge and every difficulty. And you are better now than you were before. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. And I love that. You are full of strength, power, and energy. Amen. And I confess this every day. Amen. Amen. And that's something that uh, God gives us. He gives us strength. He gives us power. He gives us energy. So let's just uh, speak what God's word says Amen. about us. Amen. Praise God. Oh. Give God a hand clap of praise. Am I supposed to stay up here? <laughs> I keep wanting to get out of the, the, the camera. <laughs> okay, that's the neighbor looking time. Ask if you will. You'll look at your neighbor. You'll smile at your neighbor. You'll point at your neighbor and you'll say, I came, I came to, receive to receive God's good word, God's good word this, day. this day. And I declare, and I declare I'm, ready. I'm ready. Are you ready, Are you ready? To, receive to receive God's good word, God's good word this, day. this day? And I declare, I declare I'll never, I'll never, 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 never ever, ever be the same be again. again in Jesus' name. Jesus Glory, Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just plead the blood of Jesus over the rest of this service this day. And Father, I just thank you that we will make a drawing on your word this day. And we'll receive and see things we've never seen before. We'll hear things we've never heard before. And the revelation from your word will drop deep down inside of us this day. And it'll change us. And we thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I ask if you will to get your Bibles and go to Proverbs. Can you all hear me fine? Yes. Proverbs chapter 3. And we're going to start with verse number 5. <clears throat> Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Now, in, as we're leaning on the Lord... That's trusting dependence. We're putting our dependence on Him. And it, it causes us to feel peaceful and complete. Um, God designed us to lean on Him. That's what He wants us to do. In, to live in close communion with Him. Now, there's a, there's a rhythm to that. And we have to do it as we're going through our day. Each day, we're just we're learning to lean. Every day, we're learning. You know, problems, opportunities, challenges come to all of us. And we have to, you know, sometimes they try to overwhelm us. And the first thing that we've got to do is instead of trying to just figure it out on our own, because, you know, we're, we're wired like that. Uh -huh. But we have to be wired where, okay, Lord, I, I've got to lean on you. This, this is your problem, and now you show me how to solve it. Because you've got the solution. This problem didn't surprise you. It surprised me. Uh -huh. But you've already got the solution. I need you to show me, and I'm asking you for your help. So, so I'm saying... I need help. I, I'm going to lean on him for his help. Amen? Because God can see the big pictures. You know, I can see and you can see this picture. But God sees the overall picture. He sees the whole deal. And he knows what the, the truth is. Um, I, I found a neat fact, and I really thought this was kind of cool. Why did the Israelite children have to gather manna day after day? It kept them aware of of their daily dependence on God. Oh, yeah. And sometimes our circumstances and our situations, even though God didn't design them, I mean, there's a lot of times that we get in our, our circumstances because we did it. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. We did it through wrong choices. We did it through, you know, wrong directions. But we were forced sometimes to depend on the Lord through those circumstances. And he wants us to depend on him no matter whether it's bad circumstances or good circumstances. Um, so the question is, are you dependent on God or are you dependent on you? 
Lean on Him. Lean on His wisdom, on His strength, on His provision. Um, Colossians 1 and 4, and I really like this. This is the Amplified. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, how you lean on Him with absolute confidence in His power, His wisdom, His goodness, and of the unselfish love which you have for all the saints, God's people. So, <clears throat> mind leaning on the Lord, and you're leaning on the Lord in any term of weakness that we're, we, we go through. We, we go through weakness. We go through problems. Okay? And, and that's weakness. We're, we, we don't know how to solve those problems. But in that weakness, when I lean on the Lord, I draw His power and His strength and His direction to me by leaning. And matter of fact, God would rather us how do I say this? We're strong in Him, but that's not the position we need to come from. We need to come from the position of weakness. Amen. Weakness draws God's strength all the time. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I go through things and I'm like, God, I don't have a clue what to do in this situation. I need your help just, just totally. And I tell you the truth, I'm learning more and more every day that when something just changes my thought process and it tries to get negative, I say, Lord, I, I need your help right now. I, Holy Spirit, please help me. Show me. Lead me. Guide me. Uh, Holy Spirit, I, I, need, I need something from you. I need a touch right this minute. And he will. But we've got to learn to lean. So many times we're, we're trying to depend on our own strength, our own mental ability, our own, you know, finances. Whatever the situation is, but that's not what he wants us to do. Um, so in our hearts during the day, we just need to call out to him. Help me, Lord. Help me. Show me. Um, an example, I've given this example before, but I was led by the Holy Spirit to give it again today. Um, many years ago, it's been over 40 years now, when my father died, um, I had some close friends, little Christian friends, and um, it was a real hard time. You know, some deaths are, are, are I don't want to say easier, but you got more grace sometimes uh, for certain things. And I'm a baby Christian, and I don't know nothing, and my father... It really hit me hard. And um, I remember my friends were telling me about the funeral. Uh, different things had come up with each of my closest friends. And I was like, hmm. And they wouldn't be able to be at the funeral. And I was like, in myself, I understood their circumstances and stuff. But in myself, I was like, Lord, I, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Because, you know, we draw strength from each other. And I was like, I don't, I don't think I can, I don't know how I'm going to make this. And the Lord spoke to me. And he told me, he said, you got me. You don't need anybody else. you got me. Praise and I was like, wow. And I mean, it was revelation knowledge to me. I mean, I, he spoke to me, and I, and I I was like, it's all right. He said, I, I mean, I wasn't resentful or whatever, because, you know, they had natural things that came up, and that's understandable. And I was like, I, you know, we don't need to have unrealistic expectations mm -hmm. of people Amen. anyway. Yeah. Put those things on yes. people or guilt people and stuff like that. That's not a God. But anyway, you know, we do that because we're leaning on people sometimes too much. But And that's what the Holy Spirit was really trying to show me. He, he was showing me, I'm a baby Christian. I haven't been born again but just a few little hours almost. And he's showing me, don't depend on man. Lean on me. I want you not looking to people. I want you looking to me. And you got me. You got me. You don't need anybody else. You got me. And I started walking around. I mean, it was just revelation knowledge to me. I'm like, I got God. I mean, I, I had a little swear. You know, I got God. I don't know about them, but I got God. And as it turned out, you know, all of them wound up uh, being able to come to the funeral. But at that point, I didn't need them. And I, I don't mean that disrespectfully or anything like that. I got God. I, I, I'm leaning on him. I, I'm not looking to people, and I'm not putting unrealistic expectations or guilt on people. Mm. Y'all understand where I'm coming from? Yes. In finances, sometimes we want to lean on friends or relatives, but that's not God's highest and best. Um, his highest and best is when we release those unrealistic expectations of others to him, and we lean on the Lord. We trust totally in the Lord about situations. I'm not saying he might not use a relative. He might not use a friend. He might to, to help you. But don't have the expectation that your help is coming from them. Yeah. Have your expectation is coming from him. 
If he chooses to use them, that's good. But you don't put your words out there to manipulate or to control the situation. Uh -huh. that's right. You understand? I got to lean on him. Mm -hmm. mm. Isaiah 26 and 3. That, you know, I, I told y'all the, the story of that one time. I had a relative that I had loaned money to several times. And, you know, it worked out really good. He paid me right back. And, and all was well. And then I needed money. And so that was how the Holy Spirit was training me. And, and I called him and I said, I need to borrow some money just for a couple of weeks. I've got, like, you know, income tax money coming. I just need this for about two weeks. And he said, uh, oh, let me, let me check. He said, no. I said, no. And I tell you, I had to learn this lesson. You understand, I hadn't arrived at this lesson. I'm thinking, well, what you doing telling me no? I didn't tell you no. Two or three times, you done, you've been to me, you've been in my wallet, and now, now I'm asking you for it. See, I'm looking wrong. Can you, can you understand? I'm, I'm counting on him because something I've done for him in the past. Because they're your relative, you're making that drawing on them. You know they just got a big check, and you, you know you got this need, and they can they can supply that need. Uh -uh, you leaning wrong. That's right. Oh, this is good. It's much better preaching than y'all right here. Just talk off. It, it really is. I said twenty six and three. That will keep him at perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you. So to walk in perfect peace, we'll have to let our minds lean on the Lord, and that's a work in progress. To, in order to get skilled at that, it's a practice that we'll have to develop in our in our spiritual walk. So we're leaning on God for strength, for physical strength, for spiritual strength, for for emotional strength, for mental strength. Um, sometimes I guess this is a pattern this morning how the whole thing is went. Sometimes I feel emotionally like a train wreck. I know y'all never felt like a train wreck, but I can describe how a train wreck feels sometimes on the inside of me emotionally. And uh, y'all say, well, I've never been like that. Well, let me prophesy to you, you will be. It's coming your way. The train's going to roll off the tracks. I'm telling you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to collide. I'm sorry. Sometimes you're at the bottom looking up, or at least you feel like you are. And your emotions will try to overwhelm you. So what do you do? You lean on the Lord. He's the only one that truly understands. You know, uh, we think, I, you, you just gotta, we just got to get real with this. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. nobody has been in your shoes. Amen. I'm talking about from the day you were born to wherever you're at now. Uh -huh. You're 95 years old. Nobody has ever been in your shoes exactly the way you have. They've never seen the things that you've seen. They've never experienced what the, you've experienced. And they've not had the feelings associated with those things. And, and they, they can't see things necessarily the way you see them uh -huh. from your shoes. Because right. somebody else could go through the same thing that you or I go through and they could say, that was a breeze. I don't even know why it's bothering them. It's bothering them because you, you can't see it in somebody else's shoes. You can't see it. You don't have any clue what they're going through. That's the reason you... you you talk out of your head and you say, I can't believe that they, they, they're not more spiritual than that. And that's bothering them. That's a judgment call that you should shut your mouth up. Oh, oh, this preaching is really getting good now. It's warming up. I mean, because so many times we want to judge other people for what they're going through. And you don't know what they've been through. You don't know how it is on them right then. I don't care whoever is the closest to you. They don't know what you're going through. They cannot tell you. They don't. They can't experience it. I mean, they can be the best, the closest to you. And they, they can be a great person. But I'm telling you, the Lord is the only one that you can really lean on like that. I mean, everybody else will fall short. And I'm not, I'm not knocking friends and family. I'm not knocking that. But I'm saying because we need that, truly. But Hebrews 4 and 15 says he's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. That word infirmities means weaknesses. So he is touched by those because he, he has experienced what we have experienced. He is the only one that has walked in our shoes from the day one. He's the only one that truly knows what we're going through. So lean on him. Ask for his help. He is not put off by our weaknesses, by our feelings. And when we ask for his help, it's a form of surrender. We're actually saying, I can't do this without your help. I'm not strong enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not enough without your help. Please help me. <clears throat> I'm going to give you some scriptures. Uh, 
some situations we face, my understanding and your understanding says this makes sense. I'll do it this way. The easy version, here's what it says. That would have been nice. Wow. I did all of this work and I didn't write the scriptures down. I wrote, I wrote the portion of the scripture. I even put where it come from in some of these. But I didn't write the... Act. Never mind. I'm, I'm, I'm having a side journey of argument with myself. It's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling up Pastor Sharon. Sometimes what she'll do to me is she'll, she'll be talking, but she's talking to herself. And I'm just not aware of it because it's just me and her in the house, us and the dogs. And I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a sure she's talking to me. And then she's, she's talking, talking, talking. She, and then I say something and, and she'll say, I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> okay. All righty then. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Charlie says some remarkable thing. Never mind. Never mind. Charlie's our dog. Charlie, Abby, Grace. Never mind. Never mind. A little too much information. <laughs> okay. Easy version of this scripture. It's, it's got to be Proverbs 3, I'm, I'm hoping. Do not think that you understand, understand things well enough for yourself. Wow, that's a problem that I have so many times in my life. I think I understand the problem exactly the way it should be, and I don't. In the contemporary English version, it says, it says you must trust the Lord and not your own judgment. Because, see, my judgment is, is based on what my experience is and what I think it should be. And my judgment can be greatly flawed. Can you see that? My, greatly, my judgment has been greatly flawed many times. And I'm thinking it'll work out this way, and it's really not going to. I'm thinking we should turn right, and we should have turned left. And You understand what I'm talking about. Contemporary English says, okay, that was, that was contemporary English. Trust the Lord, not your own judgment. Always let him lead you, and he will clear the road for you to follow. And I wrote a little side note for myself in here. Don't get in front. Always let the Lord lead you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to the own understanding. My problem is I trust in the Lord, but I get my feet in front of him so many times. And I buy something ahead of time or I, I, I make a decision ahead of time. I know none of y'all ever had this problem, so this is really doing y'all a lot of good for me to just unload all my baggage on you today. Thank you, Thank you for your concerned ears. Thank you so much. In the message translation, it says... Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Here we go. Don't assume that you know it all. We could just shut the book and go home right there. I mean, so many times I've assumed that I know. I know I know. I know I know. You know, we even have a phrase about Ish. Ish knows. And the revelation is, Ish doesn't know everything. I know, I know. That really does. Bonnie's the only one really ain't mean in me back there. Look at her. Wow. She's, I, think, I think she's trying to run around the building. Yeah. <laughs> we really don't know. You know, we think we do, but we don't. The Good News Translation says, Never rely on what you think you know. How many times have I done that? Relied on what I think I know because I handled this situation this very same situation came up before. I handled it this way. I'm going to handle it the same way I was led by the Spirit to handle it this way this time. But no, I didn't ask Him. I just assumed we're doing it the same way. And then it, it falls flat. I'm like, why did it not work out? It worked out the other time because you were led of the Spirit to do it last time. And you just assumed that's the way to answer it this time. And it, it stood on its own merit. And you just... Thank you. I'm doing wonderful preaching to myself today. I hope, I hope some of y'all will. Okay, Darby translation says, Lean not into thine own intelligence. I had a whole side journey on that. I had to just tear it out. Hmm. NIV translation says, In all your ways, submit to him. Submit to God's authority. Because sometimes that's the key. Is submitting to his authority. Because sometimes, you know, he'll lead us, he'll show us, he'll guide us. He'll say, go this way. Nah, I don't really want to go that way. Nah, I don't want to do it that way. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. I'm sure I'm warming them up. You can tell that right now. <laughs> I'm hoping that they'll, they'll get good and, good and warm by the time you get up. Okay, what I've learned that is if, if I'm waiting... Instead of in a hurry, 
It's because I'm submitting to God's authority. Because sometimes you have to wait to hear from Him. We all assume, well, you, you pray today, you'll, you'll know today. I have made the mistake many times as a pastor. People will say, what are you going to do about this situation? I said, here's what I'm going to do. And then I had to go back and come, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I remember people asked me, we were in two sides of the storefront on 14th Street, and they said, we were going to the third side. I said, absolutely. Uh, he, he led us in the second one, and he's going to lead us in the third one. Not a chance. Didn't ask him a word. So I leaned on my own understanding, and he showed me, uh, not the way you think it is. Thank you very much. Amen. So if I'm waiting, instead of in a hurry, then I'm submitting to his authority. I'm leaning on God, not myself, not my own intelligence. <clears throat> People, us, when we think we know it all, we're in a hurry. That Jeopardy theme song. Yes. <laughs> Ish did that for me. Thank you, Ish. <laughs> when we think we know it all, we're in a hurry. So we don't wait. When we lean on our own intelligence... We're in a hurry, and we don't wait. People that are leaning on what they think they know will go too fast, and it will get them into trouble. Amen. Thank you, Ish. So we have to obey God's commands and surrender, doing it God's way instead of our own, and placing God on the throne as king instead of us. Proverbs 16 and 9, the, man of a man, the mind of a man plans its way, but the Lord directs his steps. Okay, here's a good one. You'll want to you'll write this one down. I'm sure you'll want to give it to someone. Proverbs 28 and 26, this is in the NIV. Those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. The Good News Translation uh, Proverbs 28, 26 says, It's foolish to follow your own opinions. Um, Proverbs eleven twenty eight, Good News Translation, Don't depend or lean on your own wealth. Second Corinthians 1 and 9 says, Not to rely on ourselves, but only on God. Proverbs 3 and 5, and I said this one a minute ago, Good News, Never rely on what you think you know. Now, when we're trusting God, we have surrendered. Um, but I don't know everything. I don't know enough. Now, look at your neighbor and say, I don't know enough. Don't look at your neighbor and say, I'm not smart enough. Not smart enough. Look at your neighbor and say, you're not smart enough. Not smart enough. <laughs> look at your neighbor and say, no matter how <laughs> intelligent <laughs> you are, <laughs> you're not intelligent <laughs> enough. <laughs> I'm telling you, I know next time people are going to be positioning themselves between certain neighbors next time. Oh boy, I hope, I hope it gets one of these neighbor telling times again. So how can we tell if we're leaning on our own understanding? I'm going to give you three quick questions. There's probably a lots, lots more. There are lots more. Are you acknowledging and am I acknowledging God in this? If we're acknowledging God, that's, we're leaning on Him. Are you laying it before him, giving him time with it? You're asking him, and you're giving him some time to answer. Are you laying it before him as a prayer and just waiting? Are you saying, God, show me, lead me, guide me, help me? I want whatever it is to bring you the most glory. Okay. I need to touch this. Just for a second, then we'll call Pastor Sharon up. There's a lot of Christians that call themselves Christians. They know of God, but they don't know God personally. I have a personal relationship with the Lord. I talk to Him, and He talks to me. I spend time in His presence. I have a close, personal relationship with the Lord. So if I'm acknowledging God, that means I'm, I'm not just giving a lip service. I, I'm, I'm truly, I'm asking Him those questions. I mean, I'm Lead me, God, and show me, help me. Um, but there's a lot of people in the body of Christ, saved and unsaved. A lot of people in the body of Christ are not saved. They think they're saved. And I'm not trying to put doubt in anybody's mind. But there are a lot of people in the body of Christ that are, that are this way. 
that they give the Lord lip service. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Talk is cheap. Yes. The word says in Matthew 15 and 8 in King James, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In the Good News translation, it says these people say, says God, honor me with their words, but their heart is really far away from me. In Psalms 103, and I'm coming to a close, Psalms 103 says, tells us that Moses knew God's ways. Israel knew God's deeds. They'd seen the miracles. They'd seen, you know, the manna, the different things. Moses knew God's heart. Israel didn't know him personally. Praise God, that was wonderful, Ashton. Yeah. Wonderful Lord. Yeah. And um, I'm going to be speaking on leading on the Lord also, but I'm going in a little bit different direction, okay? So, Bonnie, I need your little. <laughs> anytime I pause, you can just throw that right in there because you got, you've got it perfected, so, you know, mine would be kind of pitiful. But uh, anyway, Proverbs chapter 3, and Pastor read that maybe in a couple of different translations, so. but I'm going to be reading it in the NIV, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lay not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. And then in the Amplified Classic, it says, Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know, recognize, and acknowledge him, and he will direct and make, make, your, make straight your path. And then one more translation, this is the good news. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and never rely on what you think you know. Remember the Lord in everything you do and he will show you the right way. So God will show you the right way. When we lean on him, when we trust in him, and when we submit to him. So um, I wanted to read another scripture and I know that we're all familiar with this scripture. Jeremiah 29 11, and this is the Good News translation. It says, I alone know the plans I have for you, plans to bring you prosperity and not disaster, plans to bring about the future you hope for. Now, God has good plans for us, doesn't he? And, you know, a lot of times on our path along the way, the enemy throws things up in our lives. You know, pastor's talking about different things going on, you know, in our finances or whatever. Maybe it's health or whatever it may be. Um, his father passed away. And, you know, a lot of times we allow things that go on to try to trip us up, you know, thinking, well, God doesn't know what, you know, he doesn't really uh, know or care or understand what I'm going through, what's happening in my life. But even in those times, yes, God does know. He, he is right there. He cares for you uh, right through the middle of whatever situation you're going through. And so, you know, he still has that good plan for you. And, uh, you know, as you trust in the Lord and lean on him and submit to him, he will direct your path. He'll direct your life on that good path that he has for you. Sometimes it's just all about trusting him. You know, even in those times that it looks like, you know, God's blinded to what we're going through. It is about trusting him, even in those times, because we're all going to go through things uh, financially, physically, uh, family situations, you know, things on our jobs, whatever it might be. That uh, thing that the enemy has thrown a wrench in, uh, so to say. And, uh, you know, we think, you know, God has forsaken us. He's left us. He's forgotten about us. But no, he is not forgotten about us. He is right there, right in the middle of your situation. Amen? And so we've got to lean on him. We've got to trust him. We've got, we've got to submit to him. And, you know, we've got to be like that little child that trusts their parents, you know. Uh, we've got to be like that. Just know that even though the situation looks bad, even though it is a difficult situation, 
Our Father is right there with us. He, he is carrying us right through that situation. Amen? And when we lean on the Lord and trust in Him, He is going to uh, bring us out in, in such a way that will bring Him glory. Amen? And He will get all the glory for it. So, you know, I wanted to kind of talk about uh, having a vision today. And so, you know, do you have a dream or a vision in your heart? Do you have something in your heart? You know, uh, we're familiar with Proverbs 29 and 18. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. So God wants us to have a vision. Amen. He wants us to have dreams. But um, he that keepeth the law, happy is he. And so uh, you can say, he that keepeth the word, happy is he. Uh -huh. Because God's going to bring you out on top. You're going to be the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath whatever situation you're like, you know. We can say that, you know, uh, happy is the person that trusts and leans on and submits to the Lord. Amen. That person is happy because he is following the path that God has That's for him. Right. Right. You know, we can allow anything that comes up in our life to throw us off the path because that is what the enemy is wanting to use those situations to do. Throw you off the path. But you're still on the path. <laughs> That's so funny because, you know, we feel like we're supposed to be perfect. You know, and the devil will just beat you upside the head when everything's not flowing right. You know, he'll say it's because you're not uh, living for God right. You know, you're not good enough. You're not strong enough. You're, you know, you don't measure up. And he'll just keep beating you onto the head. Well, it's not you. It's the devil telling me that junk. Amen. That is all it is. It's junk. Amen. But I heard uh, Jerry Savelle describe a vision, having a vision as a God-inspired dream. God wants us to dream throughout all of our life. Our whole life, he wants us to have a vision. Amen. And he'll give us a vision. But, you know, God wants it too. It doesn't matter, like I said, what's going on in your life. It doesn't matter, you know, uh, uh, your age. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. The enemy will use those things against you. So you know it's too late. Amen. You can't do it. You messed up. You know, you're too old. You can't do this because of this situation over here. Because, you know, you failed and, and blah, blah, blah. But no, you know, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And, um, you know, he's the same no matter what uh, the enemy throws in our life. And, you know, I think a lot of people kind of lost their vision and their dreams, like during the pandemic. I mean, you know, um, a lot of people just kind of gave up hope. Well, um, God, he didn't throw that vision away for your life. He didn't throw that plan away for your life. He still has that plan right there in the middle of whatever negative situation is going on in your life. But, you know, I, I think, you know, um, we need to pick those things back up. If you have, you know, uh, dropped off that vision or that dream that God's put on the inside of you, you need to pick that up back up because that's what God's vision is for you. Uh -huh. That's what His dream is for you. Amen? And so, you know, God is a, a now God. We can pick it back up right now. You know, um, today is the day of salvation. Praise God. And, you know... Um, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. He is a now God. So, you know, maybe you've had um, a God-inspired dream or a vision, and for whatever reason, uh, maybe whatever has come up in your life, maybe you have dropped that off. Well, God's wanting you to pick that back up. He's wanting you to pick yourself back up and keep going on. No matter what it is that the enemy has thrown you off track. You know, we all get off track all through our life. And we have to reset. Yeah. Reset ourselves. Amen. And know that God still has that vision, that plan, that good plan. That plan of prosperous, a uh, prosperous uh, plan. Which is, this means every area of your life. He wants us to prosper in every area. And that is his plan for us. Praise God. But, you know, the Bible never said when you become a Christian, you shouldn't dream anymore. Uh -huh. 
or you shouldn't have any vision for anything. No, when you're a Christian, you're going to have a God-given uh, vision, amen, a God-given dream. So um, he wants to keep us all through our lives having a vision and dream. And, uh, you know, if you don't you know, if you don't have a vision or dream, the Bible says you will perish. My people perish for, you know, because of, they don't have a vision. So um, keep that vision stirred up on the inside of you. Don't ever stop dreaming. Never stop dreaming. You know, it's never too late to start again. Pick that dream back up and start again. God is the God in whom nothing is impossible. The enemy wants you to think, well, my dream, my vision is too big. You know, um, it's impossible. But with God, it's not impossible. When we lean on him, we're trusting in him, submitting our lives to him, he will work it out. He will make it happen for you. Amen? So trust in him and lean on him and submit your life to him. And God will lead you. Uh, all the way, you know, uh, we think a lot of times that it's supposed to happen yesterday. But, you know, God, he's not limited, is he? Mm -hmm. He has a million ways to get, to bring you through to that uh, completion of that vision in your life or that dream that you might have. You know, God, he'll put you at the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. He'll uh, bring you to the right people, amen? And, you know, God can uh, override whatever man says. Man, man will try to put uh, words into your your thought life a lot of times as, as this is the way it's going to be. Uh -huh. It's always going to be like this. Uh -huh. Well, that is a lie of the enemy. Yeah. You know, God is a God of the impossible. And, you know, he'll override what man says. It doesn't matter. Maybe it's a legal si situation. And maybe it looks like, well, this is what the law says. So this is what's going to happen in my situation. No, God can override that. He can override what man says. Amen. So, you know, God is a God that will open doors uh, that no man can shut. He'll open doors with, uh, for you because you're his child. Amen. You have privileges. You are a privileged child of God. God will make a way when it looks impossible. Well, you know, they said this, and they said this is going to happen. It's going to get like this. It's going to get worse. No, God is the God of the impossible. He will make a way. Do you need wisdom concerning a situation? Trust in God. Amen. Lean on Him and submit to Him. Do you need direction? Go to God. Amen. Trust in the Lord. Lean on the Lord. Submit to Him. Uh, sometimes I have to submit certain situations to Him over and over. Because we have an enemy that is fighting against us, amen, trying to put those negative thoughts in there, those suggestions, those ne negative suge suggestions. But praise God, God is not limited. What it looks like, what it feels like, what it sounds like, amen, God will get you through. He'll get you from this situation to the promised land, amen. So visions. You know, if you don't, some things, if you don't let go, you know, that's the enemy. You know, it's, it's about trusting God. That's right. It's just about trusting God. But, you know, God had given Abraham some promises, and he wanted Abraham to get a vision of those promises. <laughs> you know, a lot of times we need to get a vision of what God's, you know, God's word, all the promises of God are yea and amen. So a lot of times we have to get a vision of that thing because the enemy's going to fight against us. And he's going to use people, you know, to come across your path and say, you know, that's impossible. And uh, things like that. So we need to get a vision. See, God used vision with Abraham. He said, your descendants are going to be uh, uh, like the sands of the sea and, and like the stars of the sky. Well, can you imagine? <laughs> God, okay, but see... Abraham didn't let go of that. He let that vision get on the inside of him. He trusted in God. He trusted in what God said. He leaned on God and he submitted to God. Okay, God, if this is what you say, you know, uh, but did it go happen overnight? No. And that's a, a lot of times when we let go of things. If it doesn't happen overnight. But God is still working on your plan. 
He hasn't forgotten your plan, amen? He hasn't for forgotten that good thing that he has for your life. Amen. Praise God. And, you know, vision helps a lot of times in, in a lot of situations. The side journey on that is, I don't know why, but pastor loses stuff all the time. <laughs> well, he talked about me, so y'all don't get angry. <laughs> Pastor's not perfect either. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but he'll lose stuff. And, you know, we're spending time looking at it. And I say, well, what color is it? You know, what, what does it look like? I have to get a vision of it in my head. Of what, you know, is it, how how big is it? Show me how big it is. Show me what color it is, you know, and all this. And, and he's like, he doesn't care. He doesn't pay attention to color or what it looks like. But if he could tell me, a lot of times it's a book he wants us to find or something, you know, and I'll say, what color is it? And so uh, if I could get a vision of it in my mind, I pretty much know where everything is in our house. And a lot of times I'll go and put my hand right on it, and he'll say, well, how did you know where it was? Well, I got the vision of it, and if I had seen it somewhere in the house, I know where it's at. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So, anyway, get that vision. God will give you something for you to have a vision to keep in your heart. Amen? Amen. And so, you know, in Hebrews chapter 6 and, and uh, 12, Paul was uh, talking to the church, and he was encouraging them to do like Abraham did. And the Hebrews 6 and 12 says, and, uh, in the message translation, it says, Keep at it. Be like those who stay the course with committed faith, and then get everything promised to them. So we have to have committed faith. We've got to stay with it. Amen. Keep that vision on the inside of you. Get this Keep that vision stirred up on the inside of you. Abraham never gave up. And that's what, you know, we have to fight against a lot of times. We, You know, the enemy has fought us and, and uh, so many things come up and that, that we just, you know, we give up too soon. We give up on it. That we've got to keep with it. We've got to have committed faith that the promise that God has put on the inside of us that he is going to accomplish it on our for our good. A lot of times we think we've got to accomplish it. We get in God's way, you know, and, and uh, you know, we, we decide, that, well, we can make this happen this way. No, as Pastor said, wait on God and he will make it happen. And it will be in the perfect timing. So Abraham was committed and he... Uh, you know, he did. He refused to give up. And so he got the promises that God had for him or gave him. And Abraham trusted in God. He leaned on God. He submitted to God. You know, no matter how big it looks, you know, your descendants as much as the stars in the sky, that's pretty big. <laughs> so, you know, no matter how big it seems, God, if you put your trust in him and submit to him, he will make it happen. And God is no respecter of persons. He did that for Abraham. He'll do it for you too. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm going to close with this. Kenneth Copeland had given an example several years ago, and it was actually, I heard Jerry Savelle tell him this, of how the Lord puts a vision in your heart. And so he said that your heart is the canvas, and I can kind of identify with this because I like art. But he said, your heart is the canvas. The Holy Spirit is the artist. And the Word of God is the oil. He said, spending time in the Word and fellowship with the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit will create an image, a dream, or a vision on the canvas of your heart. And it will be the dream God has for you. Amen? So... That thing, I know Patty, she had a dream for years to be a uh, praise and worship leader. And so she just, you know, she had that in her heart. And, it, and I know she went for many years where it didn't actually happen. But then, amen, mm -hmm. God put her in that position. Mm -hmm. And she had been faithful to it. She's committed, amen. Mm -hmm. amen. And I know there's many other ones in here. You've had visions in your heart. 
There's been things in your heart that God has put in there, those God-inspired dreams or visions. So if you let those things go, pick them back up. I just want to urge you, encourage you today to pick those things back up. Amen? We all get off track. We all uh, get discouraged. But God would want you to know today, or he, he would say to you today, to pick those dreams back up. Amen? It's not too late. It's never too late. God has a good plan for each and every one of you. Amen? Amen. So we're going to stretch our faith. Amen? We're going to stay the course. We're not going to let go. We're going to refuse to let go of the dream that God has put in our heart. Amen? Give him a hand clap of praise this morning. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? Amen. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Pastor, if you'll come up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, I just plead the blood of Jesus Christ to each and every person that's here in this sanctuary and watching by Facebook today, Father God. I pray that, Father, that any dreams or visions that they have let go of, Father, those that things that you have put in their heart, Lord, I pray that you just urge them, Father God, uh, to minister to them, Lord, to pick those things back up, Father God, because you've got a good plan for them. Lord, you've got a plan for good and not for evil, a plan to prosper them, Father God, and bless. And, Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Deborah, you can come up. Awesome words, Pastor. Awesome words. Oh, awesome. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> Get a vision of better English, Deborah. <laughs> That's what I need to do. There we go. No, wait a minute now. I, I have accepted I'm not perfect. So, therefore, it's okay. Just correct me, Lord. All right. Well, we're so glad to see some friends we haven't seen. Yay. So glad to see you guys in the sanctuary today. We're so happy, happy, happy. And uh, we just want to thank the Lord for you joining us today. Also, you on Facebook and for also sharing. I forgot to note that at the beginning to share today's message. And it's not too late because when it downloads up and it will come on your Facebook online, just go ahead and share it to a group or to a friend or whatever. But uh, it's a good word worth hearing again. Worth hearing again because we're going to get a vision a better vision, the vision that God has for us, and we are going to grow and we're going to prosper in the goodwill he has for us. All right, let's just thank the Lord. Father God, we just thank you that we got to gather together today and we got to, to be in the presence of the Holy Spirit as a corporate body, just drawing from one another and being able to lift one another up. And we thank you for our pastors. Continue, Father God, just your strong anointing on them to bring forth the word where we can just Sit at your table and taste and see how good you are. Thank you, Father God, for the spinach and the dessert. And we just know that you are training us up in the image that you have for us, the image of Christ. We don't have to be perfect, but we do have to continue to lean on you. In our weakness, we are made strong, and we thank you for that, Father God. Be with us this week, and Holy Spirit, just go out and minister to those who are in hospitals or who are ill or have financial needs, Father God, and use us where we're needed, and we just yield to you. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.